Hello, welcome to uh, another screencast in which I will walk you through the basics of creating a file in InDesign and uh, remind you of some of the things that you knew about but forgot, probably because we haven't used it for a few weeks, and uh, one or two things I didn't get a chance to mention before. What we're going to do is we're going to create a layout uh, with columns and bring in text. I'm not going to get too worried about images this time. So here's the InDesign splash screen. We want a new document. And remember, you're doing A5 and you're doing it landscape, yeah? So you need to set those two things and you need a bleed. Uh, when you open it, um, you'll have a few options there. You won't have the bleed thing underneath. So you hit more options. This bit at the bottom expands out and gives you a chance to set a bleed. Uh, it doesn't really matter much what, I'm going five mil. Uh, you set five in the first, click in another box and it goes across all of them. Um, but, Remember, you're only doing half a page. If you're doing the top half of the page, you don't want to bleed into the bottom half, which your classmate is doing. And if you're doing the bottom half, you don't want to bleed into the top. You're using a bleed at all, partly because your brief from Simon Boyce says to use one, and partly because if you're doing a color box on the background, or if you're doing a photo in the background, um, if you can just take it a few millimeters around the edge, it means you don't have to worry about lining it up with the edge precisely. So I'm going to say that I'm doing the top half of the page here. So um, I want to bleed for the top, the inside and the outside, but not the bottom because the bottom is, is somebody else's thing. So I turn off this make all the settings the same and put a zero in the bottom. And now I can OK it. And I've got my workspace. Um, I've got here the um, black is the edge of the paper. The pink is a fairly arbitrary margin, which is just going to get in our way, and we'll change it in a moment. And the red is the bleed. And you can see it can go off the top of the paper, it can go off the side of the paper, but it can't go over the bottom of the paper because down there is where somebody else is working. So this pink margin is a problem for us because um, it messes up the calculations of the page. We're going to go to the edge of the page if we need to, but if we divide the page into columns, which we're going to do in a moment, it'll only do the area inside the margin and that will mean the outside columns are too wide because they've also got the, um, the margin in. So you go into layout, which is unfortunately off the top of the screen here, but layout and then you have margins and columns. By the way, I'm using my Mac, but on a PC this is al almost going to be the same. The biggest change is I'm not going to be able to um, right click. But layout, margins and columns, and firstly we'll take the margin down to 5 mil, and you can see immediately it's jumped. Um, and we'll have five columns. I'm a big believer in odd numbers of columns. It, it just seems to work um, better that way. So it's okay that. And now we can see the area inside the pink line is divided into five equal columns. And this will give you a lovely professional looking structure to your document. Uh, just like the Eric Morecambe video, which if all went to plan I played at the beginning, where he did all the right notes but not necessarily in the right order, that only worked because he had an underlying structure and he could play the piano your design, even if you want to do something crazy and chaotic, and it will benefit from an underlying structure. So here is our underlying structure, five columns. And let's say that we are going to use these three for text and these, this one for a picture. Um, so we'll put three text boxes in those three spaces. But we want them to, to line up. Uh, obviously they can line up from the bottom. Um, but we want the tops to line up as well. And we can make life easier for ourselves by putting another guide across the screen. And you do that by clicking in the ruler at the top, or the side if you want to do a vertical one, and just dragging it down. Click and drag, and you get a guideline, which you can let go where you want it. Why is that useful? Because of a handy little thing that you get in desktop publishing programs called Snap2, which is when you're drawing a box or dragging around an image or something like that, Certain types of lines, if you get close to it, your, your, your object will, will snap to it. Um, the columns do that, the margins do that, and this new guide does that as well. So when we come to put in a text box, which I hope you can remember is, is, is this box over here with the X on it, the rectangle frame tool, click on that. We now have the ability to draw it very easily so that it does the column width and it does the column height and it just snaps to them. And then I'll do two more. I now have three nice even columns, and if I run my text into those, um, it's going to look good. It's going to look smooth. It's going to look professional. 
Um, next question is, how do you get the text in there? You can type it, you can copy and paste it, but there is a really, really quick method, and that is simply to drag in the Word file in which you typed it. Um, I've got one in Best Blue Preta Tradition that I prepared earlier on the desktop down here. And I don't need, it's only got Lorem Ipsum in it, but obviously you'll use your proper copy. Um, I don't need to open it and copy it and paste it. I just drag the document over the first of the frames and let go. And there, it imports the text. Now, clearly, as you can see here, you can't because it's not in English, but look, you can see that's the start of a sentence. It doesn't all fit in this box. Um, and you, you can wrap yourself in knots trying to cut a third of your text and paste the middle third into the middle box. You don't need to do that. What you can do is link together the three frames so that the text starts in the first, flows naturally into the second and naturally into the third. And if you change the size of the frames, the text will reflow. And you do this by looking for this little red box down here. And if you click on that little red box, you get the cursor changes to something that has some of the text in it and you simply click onto the next box and it joins them up so the text flows. Um, you see you've got this bit of Latin here, Vivamus uh, Fugiet Turpis, that sort of whatever. If I drag down the top of the box, that stays at the top, but look at the text at the bottom, disappears. Um, and if I change the bottom of this one, you'll see some of the text flows into this one. There's the Vivamus Fugiet. Um, and it's easy to resize them because we've got our guys and it'll snap to snap to them. And then again, click on the red box, the cursor changes, hold it over that one, and in it goes. Um, it's still too, still too long, uh, which is kind of to be expected because it's just random text. Um, I think you can edit the story. But, um, text thing. What you can also just simply do is just get in there and start deleting until it all disappears. Um, clearly, if you're using placeholder text, it doesn't really matter what it says. If you're using proper English, which I certainly hope you will, um, then there you go, Edit and Story Editor. With um, the text tool selected, you click and it brings up the menu, Edit and Story Editor, and there you can clearly see all the stuff that's missing and just delete it and work in it. And you see it now fits. And we've got three columns of text where not only is the text neatly arranged like this, but it also lines up. Each line lines up. We've got a little bit of space at the bottom, so let's just move this guideline down a little bit. Adjust each box to the guideline. And there we have beautiful text. And, um, you know, you're already a significant proportion of the way towards making a near professional document, which is what you need to make in order to earn a distinction.